good morning class my name is g gautam i am from ec department in today's class we are going to study about a npn transistor working of a npn transistor transistor let us recollect our previous class in our previous class we have seen unit 2 topics topics which are present in a unit 2 and what is transistor in transistor we have seen npn and pnp and also we have study working of a pnp transistor but today's topic is working of a npn transistor now before moving to our topic that is working of a npn transistor let us look at these two images what are these images are representing on left hand side you can see a iphone on right hand side you can see a laptop right now why we use mobile phones day to day life because we need to we should have lot of uh, requirements right you need to click a good picture and you need to use for viewing 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 videos live streaming videos right now why you are making this mobile phone is very special because it has a lot of features right all these features are possible by what a processor which is present in your mobile phone this processor is so responsible for what performing all this task right now why i am talking about mobile phone and a processor in this mobile phone now look into the laptop here also we have laptop if you perform some activities on this laptop like giving a presentation or doing a project and all for this also you have some processor which will work according to our requirements now all of a sudden why i am talking about a mobile phone and its processor and a laptop and its processor because so far we have studying now uh, studying about a transistor right now we should know where this transistor is used for this purpose i have bought image of a mobile phone as well as the image of a laptop let us move on to the next slide where we can see the processors of this laptop as well as mobile phone now here on left hand side you can see the a13 processor like which is present in our iphone 11 pro right if you look at this last line what do you observe by this last line right what what do you observe about this last line 8.5 billion transistors are present now we know why we are talking about a processor and why we are talking about a mobile phone why we are talking about performance of a mobile phone clear in your mobile phone you have processors and these processors have some billions of transistors clear in the same way in your laptop here you can see i5 processor intel i5 processor this will also have more number of transistor embedded in this core right now on left hand side you can see 8.5 billion transistors are embedded into this small processor on the right hand side you can see a i one core i5 processor it has 1.7 billion transistors which are present in this intel i5 processor clear this is why our transistors are very important to study right now unknowingly we are using these transistors day to day life clear whenever you are using your mobile obviously you are making your processor to work and this processor is going to on your transistor according to its requirements right in this way in your day to day life day to day life unknowingly you are using a billion transistors clear now this is what a transistor is very important to learn now let us move on to the next slide and let us see what is the npn transistor 
now we are going to study about what npn transistor let us look at the symbol of a npn transistor and let us see the biasing of a npn transistor on left hand side you can see the symbol of a npn transistor here you can see as we know transistor has base emitter and collector for npn transistor also we can see base collect collector and emitter here the arrow represent the current direction right look at the right hand side where you can see the npn transistor how it is going to visualize and you can see bit of a base which is less compared to emitter whereas bit of the collector which is more compared to your emitter and base this is how your emitter base collectors will present and if you go for doping levels what about the emitter doping level doping is doping concentration of in in emitter is high means emitter is heavily doped and base is lightly doped and collector is moderately doped now if you see here you are given a negative terminal of a battery to the emitter and positive to the base this is bee we supply now for collector and base also we have given vcc where negative is connected to base and positive is connected to which terminal look at the diagram and say collector is connected collector is connected to the positive terminal of your vcc now we should know how we got the currents like this in this direction how we got how can we name that uh, i in this direction how can we see your current id in this direction only and how can we see your current ic in this direction only that we are going to study now clear now here same npn is replaced by its transistor symbol you can see here now this is how your npn transistor is biased and whenever you give negative to the base negative to the emitter of your vee and negative of your vcc to the base how electrons are flowing how these electrons are constituting a current we should know let us analyze it right this is the diagram where you can see electrons holes which are present in electrons which are present in emitter side that those are majority charge carrying particles and base side you can see majority charge carrying particles as what well. holes in collector side what are the majority charge carrying particles as it is the n type material obviously it will be a electrons only now this is how you can visualize the electron flow right now let us draw it once let us draw and once let us visualize it right i'm just using a whiteboard where we can understand it very clearly right now what do we what what are you do what we are doing now we are just taking a transistor this is say this is npn transistor now here what i'm doing i'm just marking the emitter base and collector right width of collector will be more compared to emitter width of base is less compared to emitter right now let us give the biasing i'm just drawing the biasing now b side what is given what is given b side b side given v e e e let us draw that and collector side given as what v c c i'm just drawing it
I'm just drawing the biasing voltages. Now you can see in this format. Now what is the biasing voltage here? N side is connected with your emitter. Emitter terminal is connected to negative. You can see the battery symbols. Base side is connected to positive. So this is how I can draw. Now what about the collector set? Collector set is connected with positive and base is connected with the negative. Now let us name. This is what? N type material. The middle one. Base is of what? P type material. And the collector is of what? N type material. Because it's a NPN transistor. Now let us name emitter base and collector terminal. This is emitter terminal. Now this is base terminal. And this is collector terminal. Right? Now you can see EBC. Now here we can see the supplies V E E. Because I have given where I have given to the emitter and this is the CC. Right. And this is which terminal? Negative. Right. And this is positive. What about VCC? This is positive and this is negative. Clear. Now this is what we can see. Now, let us analyze. As we know, emitter is what? Heavily doped. When it is heavily doped, what about the electrons present here? That is a question here. Clear? Now, let us draw the electrons which are present in our emitter side. I'm just drawing the electrons. Now, let us draw the electrons here. Now here you can see the electrons. I'm just drawing the electrons. What about the emitter side? Emitter side is heavily doped. We know emitter side is heavily doped. So that's why we can see the more number of electrons present in our emitter side. Now what about the P side? What about the base side? Base is lightly doped. Right. And what are the majority charge carrying particles in base? As it, as it is a p-type material, base will be of what? Holes. Let me draw the holes here. Now can you see the holes? Or else I'll change the color. I'm just drawing the I'm just drawing the emitter. I'm just drawing the holes present in the base side here. Yeah. I'm just representing holes here. Here you can see the holes. Now look at the number of holes and number of electrons emitter side and base side. Now emitter side is more electrons present. Base side is less holes are present. And coming to the collector, collector is what? Moderately doped. Yes, collector is moderately, moderately doped. Hence, electrons will be less compared to emitter. Right? Majority charge carrying particles in collector side is less compared to emitter and more compared to base. I'm talking about majority charge carrying particles, right? Now look at the diagram carefully, which we, which I have drawn here, right? Now if you look at the diagram carefully, emitter side, N side, you can see lot, lot of majority charge carrying particles, whereas base you can see less, whereas collector side you can see moderate. Why this is happened in this format? Why we can visualize in this format? Because 
emitter is emitter is heavily doped base is lightly doped and collector is moderately doped now this is the structure of our ntn transistor now let us check the flow of current how this electrons are moving right now if you see vee that is battery voltage negative is given to where emitter terminal emitter is a which material n type material as negative is given to m what about the electrons present here negative terminal is given to n this here you can see width is little bit less compared to collector and electrons are more in emitter so right this will this will constitute what a repulsion force whenever repulsion is happening what is going to be happening now when these electrons are experiencing some repulsion what about electrons present here these electrons are tend to move towards base now, just look at here now see electrons are moving towards base now here you can find emitter and base junction right and here also you can see the junction between base and collector that is j clear you can see emitter base junction and collector base junction when these electrons are moving when these electrons are moving these electrons will going to cross the emitter base junction see these are crossing right now these electrons are what they are doing they are crossing and they are crossing here right electrons are crossing and you can see some holes present in base electrons are crossing the emitter base junction in this electrons we are combining with the holes present here see how electron is combining with the hole now what about the remaining electrons which are cross with the emitter base junction look at the diagram here what happening electrons are few electrons are recombining with the holes whereas few are you can see here what about these electrons present here these electrons try to move towards your collector whenever these electrons are moving towards collector these electrons are going to cross collector and base junction that is jc see they are moving moving and you can see here these electrons which are moved they came here right now look at the number of electrons present in collector side those are increased right see now due to the electron movement we can we can name the currents and we can give the directions to the currents clear now let us see that now if you look at the diagram carefully now if you look at the diagram carefully now electron is reached what collector junction and here this collector is connected where positive this electron move in this form right see how electrons are moving right now what about the electrons which are recombined with the base recombined in the base region and this electrons which are recombined in the base are going to flow in this direction right now what about the electrons here electrons are moving in this direction right see here how electrons are from here to here in this direction electrons are going to move whenever these electrons are moving in this direction now let us name the now let us name the currents now see here electrons are moving in this way right now let us 
let us draw the current what is the current direction this will be the current direction which current it is emitter side current that is i e clear now look at the base electrons are moving in this way now what about the current current will be in the opposite direction that is in this way this is which current i b i b current clear what about the collector side what about the collector side electrons are moving in this format right now what about the current this is the current direction this will be in this direction this is which current i c now in this way we can see how call how electrons are moving in our npn transistor and how these electrons are constituting our current ie ib and ic how these electrons are responsible for current ib ic and ie now due to this moment of electrons you can see the currents ie ib and ic by this we can write here by looking at this diagram by looking at the current flow ie is equals to ib plus ic clear this is what we can observe by this diagram observe by this operation clear this is all about a npn transistor right let us move on to the next slide now this is how you got current direction that is ie ib and ic clear now let us move on to the next slide where we can see a small animation by this animation we can understand it more clearly the npn transistor structure is composed of three regions it has a heavily doped region of n type material called the emitter the emitter is very rich in free electrons there is a base that is a narrow region composed of lightly doped p type material it has a few holes that are mobile and capable of carrying electrons the collector region of n type material is not as heavily doped as the emitter but it also has free electrons most of the emitter carriers diffuse through the thin base region because they are attracted by the collector region some of the electrons are attracted by the holes in the base region and will move off through the right side shown here this is a very small amount compared to the current moving through the base into the collector in an npn transistor the emitter current is the sum of the collector current plus the base current so if you have 100 milliamps at the emitter you will have 99 milliamps at the collector and 1 milliamp at the base an important characteristic of a transistor is something called beta beta is calculated by dividing the collector current ic by the base current i but this is what about a npn transistor how electrons are flowing how these electrons are responsible for getting current ib ic and ic and we can see beta here beta is equals to ic by ib clear this is amplification factor beta about this beta we are going to study in our upcoming classes clear now let us move on to the next slide now whatever we have studied so far that we have put it in a slide and we know what is pe that is the voltage which we are given between our emitter and base terminals right now let us let us go through these lines for better understanding the voltage pee provides a negative potential 
at the emitter which repels the electrons in the n type material and these electrons cross the emitter base junction that is je to reach the base region clear just now we have studied whenever you are giving negative terminal to the emitter side the electrons which are present in emitter terminal uh, emitter region the, those are going to repel right when these are repel they are going to cross the emitter base junction right and whenever these electrons are crossing emitter base junction they'll reach where base region clear so far what we have studied same thing now there are a few there are a very low percent of electrons recombine with the free holes of p region now what is this p region p region is nothing but what base region base is what lightly doped hence the majority charge carrying particles present in p side will be of less percent now whenever our electrons are moving towards p region as there are very less number of holes only few electrons are recombined with the holes present in the p region same thing mentioned this provides very low current which constitute the base current yes few electrons are recombining with the holes by which we will get less base current only that is ib now what about the remaining electrons this remaining electrons are going to cross the collector base junction and these will reach us where collector by constituting a collector current that is ic now you can see here the remaining electrons cross the collector base junction to constitute the collector current ic clear let us move on now as an electron reaches of the collector terminal and enters the positive terminal of the battery an electron from negative terminal of battery ee enters the emitter region clear now this flow slowly increases and the electron current flows through the transistor now what about the p type the pnp transistor there you can see the hole current current due to holes right this flow slowly increases and the electrons go to the transistor right let us move on now by uh, by looking at the animation by visualizing the electron flow in a whiteboard by looking at the diagram in our ppt what do we understand so far we understood that the conduction in a npn transistor takes place through which through which npn transistor nothing but what electrons if it is a pnp transistor it takes place through what holes now the increase or decrease in the emitter current affects the collector current yes it will affect the collector current now let us see the advantages of our transistor this vjt and also let us see the disadvantages of our transistor vjt now these are the advantages of our transistor right there are many advantages of using a transistor such as high voltage gain whenever we are using a transistor we are going to get a high voltage gain now low power voltage is sufficient for our transistor right wherever you are using applications where low power is low oh, low voltage supply is concerned there you can use the transistor and here more suitable for low power applications right wherever it require a low consumption of power there a transistor is useful smaller 
and lighter in weight right this will be smaller and lighter in weight and that is why we are going to construct or we are going to embed lot of means billions of transistors in a single chip right mechanically stronger than vacuum tube before transistors we used to have vacuum tubes now these vacuum tubes are what replaced by our transistor no external heating is required like vacuum tubes right very suitable to integrate with resistor and diodes to produce ics right whenever you are producing ic it is very suitable to integrate with our resistors right now let us look on look into the disadvantages of a transistor now there are few disadvantages such as they cannot be used for high power application due to lower power dissipation clear they have lower input impedance and they are temperature dependent right they have what low input impedance and they are temperature dependent right now this is all about the transistor now let us uh, conclude what are the topics which we have studied so far and what we are studied in our last class also clear now in this class we have studied about why transistor is very important and where these transistors are used and what is a npn transistor how ie ib and ic those are base current collector current and emitter current how these currents are flowing in a npn transistor and what is the construction of a npn transistor and how electrons are constituting the currents ib ic and ie we have studied in our today's class and also we have seen what are the advantages of npn transistor what are the disadvantages of our npn transistor so far we have studied all of these right now let us meet in the next class next lecture class thank you